So when can we use a normal approximation on a binomial distribution? Okay. Um, and then my other question deals with simulations. And really what I want to say is, um, I don't have a whole slide about it, but simulations, you can simulate many, many, many trials of your binomial situation, and it will get a good estimate of the actual probability. Okay. Um, as we did in many of our simulation projects, you can reflect back and think of many of them that were definitely binomial situations. All right. Um, so when can we use a normal approximation? So all of these are a probability of, that's the same. Here the probability is 0.1, and we just go from a sample size of 4 to 10 to 20. Okay. And look, this is skewed right, right? Because when my probability is 0.1, most of the time out of 4, I'm going to get 0. Sometimes I get 1, sometimes I get 2, very rarely 3 or 4. Okay. But if I sample 10 times, I'm more, I'm, I'm actually most likely to get a one there, right? My expected value is a one n times P. And when, it, when I, when I do 20 times 0.1, two is my expected value. And you can see that, but it's still not symmetric. It's still skewed, right? Skewed, right? When I take a probability of 0.3 skewed, right? But as I do a, uh, N equals 10, now it's starting to look a little bit more symmetric, right? This side on the left doesn't run into a wall over here. See how there's a wall at zero? I can't go below zero. And so I run into this wall and it makes my distribution be skewed right. Here, I'm not, I'm still running into the wall, but not as badly. Here, I'm barely running into the wall. See how I'm like getting values at one, but not even really at zero. It's, it's basically unimodal and symmetric. If I go to a probability of 0.5, it looks symmetric and it looks even more like normalish. This is like, perfect. Okay. And so what we see is there's some rules of thumb for when we can do a normal probability. Okay. Um, normal approximations. Suppose that account X has a binomial distribution and trials and successes. So we're binomial. When N is large, the distribution of X is approximately normal with the mean and standard deviation that we just talked about in the last lesson. All right. Um, if n and p, the number of successes, right? The number times the probability, the number of trials times the probability. So this is basically the number of successes is greater than 10 or equal to 10. And this is the number of failures, okay? Um, and so if you look here, my n times p is only 0.4 and my... Um, 0.9 times 4 would be 3.6. So I don't really have enough successes or failures on either side. Here, um, I'm getting 1 is my n times p. Here, I'm only getting 2 is my n times p. So my n times p is way too small. This one, if you start looking at this, 0.3 times 20 is actually coming out to 6 is my n times p. And it looks like there's enough to finish. And I'll tell you right now, some textbooks actually make these into 5s. Okay. So um, it doesn't matter whether you use the five or the 10 rule. Um, if they ask you on a problem, both rules would be sufficient. But really, this one's already basically normalish. Okay. This one, where you have 10 successes on the left and 10 successes on the right, there's plenty of room where we don't hit a wall over here. Okay. We flatten out before we hit the wall and we flatten out over here before we hit the wall. Okay. Um, here, you could argue. Uh, there hasn't been enough room to like really get any of a tail there, right? I might only get like one and a half or maybe two standard deviations, but I need to go a little bit further to really finish that tail on that side. But I hit the wall too soon here. I definitely hit the wall too soon here. I definitely hit the wall too soon. So it's about this idea of walls. And when I'm trying to explain this over and over and over in classes, people are like, why is that NP and NQ rule there? Okay. The number of successes and failures needs to be greater than or equal to 10 is the rule of thumb that we're going to use for this. That's when we can use a normal approximation for a binomial distribution. Now, let's actually do a problem. All right. Um, this is sort of a sample sample distribution. There are many, many, many samples uh, um, from this population. And you can see that that normal approximation meets that model really, really well. Okay. So let's talk about this context and we'll do it with the binomial method and get an exact answer and the normal method and get an approximate answer and we can compare the two. Okay. So our attitudes towards shopping changes. The sample survey showed that fewer people enjoy shopping as in the past. A survey asked a nationwide random sample of 2,500 adults if they agreed or disagreed. I like buying new clothes, but shopping is often frustrating and time consuming. The population that 
poll wants to draw conclusions about is all residents 18 and over. 60% of all U.S. adults would agree. Um, that's maybe historically what it had been. What is the probability that we would get 1,520 or more? Okay. So really the binomial method. So this is the number who agree. So X is the number who agree. And we have probabilities for each. And the fewest that might agree is zero, one, dot, 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 dot. Um, and the most that might agree is all of them, 2,500. Okay. And that's probably a probability of zero. What is the probability that 1,520 or more would agree? And so the probability we're looking for is this section right here. Okay. 15, 20 or more. Well, if I want to use um, binome, like I could add up 15, 20, 15, 21, 15, 22, but that would be a thousand things that I need to add. No, thank you. Okay. Um, if instead I can use CDF and I can measure 15, 19 or below, I can come down here and do one minus all of these probabilities. Okay. And so that's what I'll do. So the probability that x is greater than or equal to 1520 equals 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 1519, which is 1 minus binome CDF of 2500, comma, 0. 0.6, comma, 1519. All right. And if I calculate that and grab my calculator and do 1 minus second distribution hit up a few times binome cdf we have 2500 in our sample probability of success is 0.6 and we want to do 1519 or below and that pastes in and we hit enter and we get about 0.213 okay so that's the exact answer if we do it with the binomial method if we use a normal approximation here I can get a mean is n times p, which is 0.6 times 2500, and that gets me um, 1500. Uh, I could have done that in my head. Um, and the square root of npq gets me the square root of 600, and we get about 24.9. Oh, times Q, 0.4, okay? Um, and we get about 24.5. So now I can use this and say, what is the probability that X is greater than or equal to 15, 20? And what we would do is we would say normal CDF My min is 1520. My max is like 9999. Okay. My mean is 1500. And oh, my standard deviation is 24.5. Okay. So if I grab my calculator, we can say second distribution, normal CDF. And let me shrink this a little so I can see my math. All right. Um, 1520, really big number. Good enough. Mean, 1,500, standard deviation, 24.5. And this is the approximate value that we get, which is 0 0.207. All right? So we are pretty stinking close when we do this normal approximation. All right? Um, so normal approximation requires NP and NQ to both be greater than 10. I didn't check it here, but if you ever use that, you need to actually verify. 0. 0.6 times 15, 2,500 equals 1,500, and 0.4 times 2,500 equals 1,000, and they're both greater than or equal to 10, so um, normal approximation is okay. Okay? Um, that is using normal approximations for binomial distribution. Good luck and see you later.